Hi Flosstube, this is Helen D. I had a few minutes. I'm going to attempt to show you guys a tutorial on how I've been fini finishing these pedestal FFOs. Um, this is a piece by Heartstring Samplery called Kind Words Never Die. I did this as a teacher gift and I finished it on one of these small pedestals that they've been selling at Michael's. Um, I don't know if they still have them in store. I know that they definitely still have them online because I ordered a couple more last week. So this is the larger of the pedestals and then it also comes in a smaller version. I use the smaller one to finish Heart and Hand. Um, this one is Spring Whirly Gig. I don't know the dimensions, but I can put a link below to the two different sizes. But as you can see, there's there's quite a bit of difference. I found that the larger one fits about five inches across, a little a smidge more than five inches across, um, which is perfect for all of Heartstring Samplery's that. Um, the round one she has, T is for Turkey, O is for Old Glory. She has a whole series of those and they all fit on there perfectly. I stitched mine on a 14 count, this one. I've also stitched O for Old Glory on a 16 count and that one fit with a little more space around the edge, um, but they both fit nicely. So how I've been finishing them to go on there is basically the same way that I finish a flat circular piece with some fabric mounted on the back a trim on the edge because these are metal already I just put a couple magnets on here to hold it on this is a gift she probably won't be swapping it on and off but that was the easiest way to attach it so that's I just did it the same way so I have a second one of these stitched that I need to finish up I've prepped some things to kind of make this go a little faster um, but I'm showing you the basics um, on how I do this okay Let's get to it. So here is my stitched piece. I also um, I have some batting. I'm using sticky board because that's what I had. In the past I have used mat board. That works fine. I've used a thicker cardboard. That works fine. I just happen to have a sticky board right now. Um, so that's what I've been using. So I have my piece. I found I already did the back piece. I found a coordinating fabric. I didn't worry about it too much because you're not going to see it. So I will show you how I lace this on there. So what I did first was I measured across with my ruler and found that this piece was a little over five inches. It was just about five inches. Um, so I use a protractor or a compass. Now I'm not sure which one this is. Um, and in order to make a five inch circle, I just set it for two and a half inches on its little ruler. And then I drew a circle on a piece of file folder because this is really thin and easy to cut out. So I made my circle, I cut it out. Then I kind of held this up to it and I held it up to the window to see how it looked and mine was actually a little big but by doing it on this really thin stuff then I could put my hole my um, compass point right back in the hole in the middle and I just took it in like you know a sixteenth of an inch and cut it out again and held it up and it was fine then I have a template that I took on my sticky board and I just traced out two sorry I gotta figure out where my camera is I traced out two and then I cut them out. This cut out for me fine with regular scissors. Um, foam core would definitely, I, I would think, be too thick, but any of the thin cardboard should be fine. So now I have my circle. I can put my template away for the next time. So what I do to get this on there I want it a little bit puffy and also that puffiness lets me center it a little better. So I have two pieces of batting. Uh, mine happens to be warm and natural because again that's what I had. Any kind of batting should be fine. And I just held it up there right on my piece and cut it to size. Naturally there's a curly side so let me put that up. Um, so I just went right around it
There we go. I already cut the first one out, so now I have two pieces of batting, some cat hair, and my circle. I'm going to take the sticky paper off and stick the first layer of batting right on the sticky side. If you don't have st sticky paper, you don't need to stick these on there at all. It's just kind of nice to have them held in place a little bit. So there's the first one. I happen to have some stitchery tape, the double-sided tape. So for the second layer, I'm just going to cut the tiniest of pieces, like half an inch, three quarters. Pop that on there. Peel it off, which was easier said than done the last time I did it, and stick the second piece of batting on. If you have stitchery tape, you could do this to the first layer if need be. Honestly, this was the hardest part was getting that first layer off. And I have nails. Well, hopefully yours goes easier than this. <laughs> Oh, we might be showing you without taking this sticky off. All right, we will show you how it is without it. I'm just going to peel that whole thing off, see? If you don't have it, don't use it. My second piece of batting will now go right on there with no sticky tape. I took this, I set it over my stitching, And I'm just going to cut the edges off. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't, it, it does not have to be perfect. It's all going to work out on the end. So I'm basically just cutting a larger circle to get the little scrappy bits off, to get the extra edging off, to get the um, nice edge that doesn't ravel off. All the way around. So, as you can see, mine is not perfectly circle. It's fine. It doesn't matter. It'll all work out in the end. Then I'm going to take some thread. I like mine to be a little on the thicker side. Um, I have some quilting thread. My long needle, super sharp. <laughs> And I'm going to take a running, I guess you'd call it a running stitch, around the edge. So I'm flipping it over to the back. And I'm just going to kind of go in and out all the way around the edge. I'm maybe, I don't know, quarter of an inch from the outside. I like these long doll needles for this because um, you can get a lot on there. And then when it gets too bunchy, I just pull it through so that I can keep going. And I want to go all the way around to the other side. This is why I already did the back, so you didn't have to watch this part twice. Now, I have not 
done a tart finish before, but I can see myself finishing one the same way. I know there are other tutorials for tarts. Um, I haven't watched any yet because I haven't done one before. Um, but I could see that this would fit in a tart just the same if you had it the right size. It gets kind of curly, which is no big deal. I'm going maybe a quarter inch between each um, poke too. So I got to the other side. I'm going to pull this out, kind of stretch it back open. Now my spool of floss is still attached to one end. The other end I just kind of give myself some extra. I pull that long needle off. I'm stretching it back out but holding on to that end so I don't lose it because I can always, if I need extra, it's coming off the spool. So now we have like a little pouch. And what I'm going to do is set my sticky board with my two layers of batting not stuck together. I'm just gonna tuck this right in there. Try and line that line of batting up. Um, now, I don't really worry about what it looks like on the front at this point. What I do is I grab both ends of my string and I kind of just cinch it up. I pull both sides together. Then I flip it over and I'm way off. But then I can move it because it's not sewn in so I can, I can pull it down, I can pull it over, then I hold onto it and I cinch them back up a little. And that's better. You know, shimmy it down this way a little bit. And this allows me to move it where I want to move it before I tie it on there. Um, I think that looks pretty good. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to flip it back over, find my loose end my, my end not on the spool. Oh, <laughs> find my spool, which I dropped here. Find my needle. <laughs> I take a small needle for this. It's a quilting needle, so it's sharp. So on the short end of my string, I'm basically now going to lace this on here. So I'm taking, this is easier once you get this little piece taken care of. I'm just going to take this little piece, pulled kind of tight, and kind of loop it through. I'll show you that closer when we get to the side, the non-loose side. So I'm kind of just going back and forth a couple times. It's about all I have string for. I might get three. And then I'm just going to knot it off on this side. So I'm going to go in on a little bit and then through a loop and get that out of there. So there's that. So then on my spool, I'll just give myself plenty of floss, cut it off, and put my needle on this side. All right, so I'm gonna check my front. Check your front often just to make sure it's still holding still to where you want it. I found that when I pull it tight on the back, if I kind of pinch it with my finger, it holds it in place. So, like I said, I'm going up to the other side and I kind of go in and out and pull it. And then I'll just go to another area I haven't been poke it through and pull it. Then go across. And I'm just trying to tighten that up. And then check on the front, <laughs> make sure it's still okay. And it looks to be good and it should be kind of holding now. So now as I go in and out, I'm trying to hit the sides I haven't been to yet.
and I have way too much thread which is fine cut it off when I'm done so like here's a bump over here I might go over there pull that through there's extra over here I want to make sure is held tight get some of that check the front still good and that it gives you a nice really smooth surface um, I think the batting helps hide any flaws <laughs> if you cut it and it's not quite as symmetrical as you would like it I think the batting makes a difference so I think that's probably enough on mine um, I might have a lump right here let's see if I can get over there and get that kind of pull it tighter all right I'm gonna put it through I'm just gonna pick up a little bit go through my loop and make a knot and then I just cut it off and then not lose that needle again <laughs> so there's my front now I will do the same thing with the back except I don't use batting if it is on a sticky board I just stuck it on there then cut it looped it around um, it's much thinner so it's easier to pull really tight um, so I just kind of laced it on there so these two pieces now you need to sandwich together you can use you could probably use the stitchery tape you could use the aliens tacky glue that takes forever to dry so you just have to when you use it squish it down between some books and come back to it the next day um, I'm just gonna use hot glue which I just burned myself on a few minutes ago. So I'm going to put, um, and even look, like this little leaf was kind of close to the edge. You can still kind of move it around a little if you, if you play with it. I'm just going to put some hot glue right around the edge and zip some in the middle and then try and jam it on there before it dries. Get myself an extra one in case I need it. So again, I'm just putting it around the edge. I'm going kind of fast because the beauty of hot glue is it dries fast, but sometimes it dries too fast. Push it down on there. And then if you didn't get quite enough um, on the edges, you can always you know, poke it in there and squeeze them together a little bit more if you need to. And I'm gonna put some trim on it so you won't notice as much. That's other, one of the other reasons why I like putting a back on these pedestals, even though you're not going to see it it gives me a place to attach my trim so that the trim's not completely buried. Um, and it gives you a place to attach the magnets that it doesn't pull on the piece with the stitching on it if you were going to make this, you know, for yourself seasonal to swap things out. I got a bit of a bunch right there, but you won't notice once it's together. All right, so. Um, that's on there so now for my trim I'm using some of the lady dot pom-poms um, the closest color I had on this one on hand was vanilla it kind of picks up this yellow that I put in um, I used a purpley one on the other one but it was it didn't match this one so the lady dot trim Stephanie Webb Lindy stitches did a fantastic tutorial on pom-pom trim and how to take it off this banding it comes on you know it comes on this banding lady dot pom-pom you can take off most other pom-poms you cannot um, so basically you take a really sharp pair of scissors and her her tutorial and that is fantastic and I'll link it 
you cut these little, there's some little strings holding them together. So you s reach in there and snip one and you've got to snip all the way through it or it gets kind of stuck. Then you go on the end where that little string is and you just kind of pull it out and it separates it from the banding. Now I did as much as I need so that you didn't have to sit there and watch me do that. <laughs> um, so again, you could sew this on, you could use tacky glue, I'm using hot glue. Um, I just pick a side, I'm not going to pick where that lumpy bump was because that's going to give me enough trouble as it is. I might pick the bottom. I'm not going to start right on the edge. I'll probably give myself like an inch. And I'll put a little thin piece of glue in there and hold that first bit down. And then I'm just going to go around. I haven't cut it off my big piece yet, just in case I need more. Um, I already pre-did mine, so I know I'm good. But So again, I'll just put a little line of glue. And I know some people are anti-hot glue, so there are other options. And I'm just pressing that in place. Kind of keeping it upright, which you can tell once you get it off the banding where the top is and the bottom is. Now on the smaller one I did, and I'll show you again in a minute, it was a little smaller. It was smaller than it should have really been for that pedestal, but that actually worked out well because I was able to put a piece of fabric behind it, and then I think the palm trim really shows up well. Um, I think it shows up better than it does on this one just on the edge, but these are big enough that I don't have any extra room. Um, this finish would also work on any kind of pedestal like if they're out of these at Michael's I know somewhere around here I have like a candle holder type pedestal I picked up a Hobby Lobby that has a round circular top it would work on that um, this is the same way I do a circular ornament if I'm doing an ornament at Christmas except when I glue the edging on I start on the bottom, I make a piece of cording, I hold it up to find where the middle is, I put that middle on the bottom and I start there and I glue up one side and then I glue up the other side and then I attach them up here and that's what I make my loop with, my cord, um, to hang it. Usually I attach them with, I like to put a charm with the year, so I kind of sew that on there. So I'm getting close to where I need to be. I'm going to go pretty close. Now these pom-poms are pretty good. You can see right here this end, that's kind of a fuzzy one. So I'll probably cut that one off. So I just look and see, all right, if I cut this one off, and I'm hoping you can see that, this would be my next one I need to keep. So I'm going to try and cut just this fuzzy one off, but, but keep this little bump that's next to it with the sharpest little snips I have. So there goes that fuzzy one. So then I want to cut off this little bit and keep the pom-pom. Oop, I wiggled. So hopefully those will line up when I get them on there. So I'll just do one side. And then the other.
and that looks pretty good to me. And especially seems this is going to a non-stitcher. She'll never know. Um, so that's my front. There's my back. So now the only thing that I need to do is I glue on a couple of magnets. Um, these are rare earth magnets. I get mine on Amazon. Um, they come in a tub. Sometimes there's a little ladybug magnet in there. So normally what I will do, I'll put them right on the, I'll put two right on the pedestal. Anywhere's fine, really. And then I'm going to put the glue on the magnets. And then just set this on there. Give it a squish. And we're done. That's all on there. Um, you can set these up this way. And then these pedestals, the reason I really like them, because they have a scalloped edge, you can lean them and they stand up, they balance, they stand up all on their own and then it's kind of like you've given it a little kickback like you would, you know, a picture frame. Um, so I think that's really nice because then when I have them downstairs, if I display them, they're a little harder to see up this way, but if you tip them down, it's like you've given this nice pretty round frame. Um, and there's something a little special. So there you have it. That's how I do them. Again, this one, I did the same. This one was just going to me, um, so I didn't bother to put a back on. The reason I put a washer on it is be because I didn't put a back on. It wasn't as thick, and these are a little indented, and I needed it to sit up a little. So I just put a washer on it to kind of give it an, a little extra oomph. I did the round just like, just like the back of this one. And then I mounted this one the same as I did the top with the batting. And then I just glued the pom-pom in between. And I really like the look of this one because, like I said, I think that pom-pom stands out a little more. And then it's on there and it's ready to go. I am planning on doing the other seasons and some of her other rounds, um, heart and hand, for these small ones. Um, and I'm planning on doing... I have one of these for me and I did O is for Old Glory and I'm planning on doing T is for Turkey. Um, and some of the other heartstring sampler pieces for that. So I hope that was helpful. Um, hopefully you could see everything. My setup is not the best. And if there's any other tutorials you'd like me to do, I will do my best. Just let me know. I follow a lot of Vonna the Twisted Stitchers tutorials. She has fantastic ones. So sometimes I don't feel comfortable doing a tutorial if I'm doing the exact same thing that she does. <laughs> so, um, but I'll tell you that if there's something you want to know how to do and I've watched Vonna's and it's great, then I'll let you know where to find it. Um, okay. Thank you guys very much. I hope this was helpful and I will talk to you again soon. Bye.